Hey kids. Um, today is like the coolest lesson ever. It's lesson six in module four and it is totally fun and really easy, very concrete, easy to see. So the objective is to relate fractions as division to fraction of a set. And so this is just finding a fraction of a number. And keyword of means multiply. When you see of in a word problem, it usually means to multiply. Um, so let's take a look at what we might have. If you have just thinking about the way numbers relate together. Um, if you have 32 in a set, you could set it up in an array. Arrays are going to be used in today's lesson, and it's basically how many in going horizontally and vertically, and then multiply them into a set. And so if you look at this one, like one third of six, make six pieces or counters and then you want to divide it into three groups and you want one of them. And so one third of six is two. One third of six is two. So it's really, I don't know, maybe it's just me, it just seems like it's very concrete. Now when you have one of them, if you find one, you can find any. So if I have two thirds of six, then that would be two groups out of the three groups. So if I have two thirds of six, I have four. Okay, that's where I get this. Um, there's just, I have a whole bunch more samples. All of the group would be three thirds of six. So that would be six because that's everything. Um, you can uh, take the next one and look at the set of 12. These would be 12. And if it's in four groups, how many are in one? One group would have three. And one fourth of 12 is really, we're gonna learn that multiplying is going straight across the top and straight across the bottom. One times 12 is 12, four times one is four. So this is a little different than with addition and subtraction. And so you're gonna learn to uh, straight across multiply, straight across multiply. You end up with this division problem and then solve. Again, a few more examples, one third of nine. Any whole number can be placed over one to show that it's a whole number because nine divided by one is still nine, so I'm not changing the value of this. One third times nine is really nine over three, which I didn't even bother to put because I was like, oh my God, it's so easy. And, um, and so then <clears throat> you circle the, the set of three one sixth of 12, I have 12, I have six groups and I want one of them. And again, if I was gonna multiply, I would have 12 over one and it gets 12 over six, which is two. And we haven't even gotten to the cross canceling part, which is so much fun. So this is just straight across one fifth of 15 is three. So it's all about the models today. So if you take your book and open to page 157, super lot of fun here. And if you have colored pencils, you can even make some of the uh, pictures, but you don't have to, because you're probably gonna wanna blaze right through. So you can see that this is a three by three set. So I know I have nine, so nine is how many. But one third of the set would be these three, okay? So of course that equals three because one third of nine equals nine thirds, which equals three. Okay, so we're just showing uh, how many are in the set and it's three. So uh, let's see, we'll finish this whole thing. Two thirds of nine then would be two sets. And of course now I see that that is six. And so three thirds of nine would be the whole thing. And it's really, again, just like, wow, it, that's all there is? Yes, there are just nine total. And that's all there is, yay. And so for this one, you can go right across and count that there are five times three, so you know there are 15. So the sets on this one go this way. So when you look and see what the denominator is, that's how many are um, in, that's how many, uh, sets there are and so one of those would be five and again one third of 15 
is 15 thirds, which is equal to five, okay? So um, two thirds would then be all of these and all of these for 10. And if you wanna see that written out, okay, that is going to be two times 15 for 30 over three. And then you end up with 10. So um, all of the set would be all 15 and then you can set it up doing the same thing. So there's just, it's very concrete. You should be able to easily see what you're getting and then connect it to the written method. Um, it just as uh, this set. So for the next one, I have four, one, two, three, four, five times. So that makes 20. And if I have only one fifth of 20, that's this. So I can see that that's four. Okay. Then if you know the amount of one, you can take that one and multiply it by the numerator to identify how many are in four-fifths or three-fifths or two-fifths or five-fifths. And so you can use that. So this is where knowing that numerator is really important so that you can make those connections. So four-fifths of 20 is really going to be whatever one is times the numerator. You can also count by fours. Four, eight, 12, 16. So, and then you can also do the math. Uh, the written method. So I know it's 16. Now 4 fifths of 20 is, uh, we're going to find that this is not efficient later. 4 times 20 is 80. And then you, you get these sort of larger division problems. And so nobody really wants to do these. That's why we're going to talk about simplifying uh, by reducing the size of our figures, but we're not going to do that today. So just know that 80 divided by 5 is 16. And then, of course, if I end up with 20, and that's all that I have in my set, then that is where I have 5 fifths, because that has to be the whole thing, equal to 1. For D, look at how many. We have 24 in groups of 3, therefore I have 8 groups. So if I have one eighth of 24, I have three because it's just these three. Now that you know one, you would take the three and multiply it by your numerator. So the three times three would give you nine, three groups. Four times three would give you 12, three, six, nine, 12. Six times three would give you 18 and seven times three would give you 21. And you can go ahead and count them by uh, ones or threes and prove it. It's a real fast lesson today. Huzzah! We love those. All right, find four sevenths of 14. First, draw the set and then shade to show your thinking. So I need to have seven sets within my 14. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the sets. You have to set them up like this. It's not two sets of seven. It's seven sets of two. So how do you find four sevenths of 14? It would be this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So uh, four sevenths of 14 would be equal to eight, two, four, six, eight. Okay, you can also um, do the multiplication. But again, we're not trying to do that today because we don't want to create these big division problems. We just want to see the model. Make the model, it'll be so much easier. Now, how does knowing one eighth of 24 help you to find three eighths of 24? Like I said, once you know one, you can know anything. So draw a picture. So if I have eight sets, because that's what the denominator says, but I have to make all the way up to 24, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then uh, I know that three times eight makes 24. So these are my eight sets. 
Okay, these are my eight sets of three. Now I know here that one eighth of 24 is this set. So one eighth of 24 equals three. So if I know one set is three, how can this help me know that the three would be uh, nine? Because I'm gonna take three times three and get nine. And so it's really, there's just so many different ways to look at this. You take your 24, divide it by three uh, to get eight. That's how many sections. 24 divided by eight equals three per section. And, um, and so then the three eighths of 24 equals nine. So it's very helpful because I can see each part. Of three and multiply by three. So the next one, there are 32 students in a class. Of the class, three-eighths of the students bring their own lunches. How many students bring their lunches? And sometimes they'll say, if three-eighths bring their lunches, how many students don't bring their lunches? Watch out for that. Um, okay, so we have a set of 32, and we need eight groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we need to count all the way up to 32. Okay, and I know that 4 times 8 will give me the 32. So make your array with 4 rows of 8. Okay, now this is where you draw your lines to create your 8 sets because that's what the denominator says. Okay, and I need 3. So three eighths bring their lunches. So how many is it? Well, it's four times three. And that gives you 12 students. Okay. And finally, last problem. This is so fast. Huzzah, we love this. Jack collected 18 $10 bills while selling tickets for a show. Um, he gave one-sixth of the bills to the theater and kept the rest. This is one of those where I say, look, read the question carefully. How much did he keep? So if I have 18 and I have to have six groups, then one, two, three, four, five, six, but six times three is going to help us create our set. So I have 18 $10 bills, that's the 18, okay? He gave one sixth, one sixth to the theater. And then he kept the rest. Okay, so theater and kept. So how much money did he keep? Well, if these are all $10 bills, not ones, he kept five sixths of the bills. Okay, and if each one represents 10, so there are a couple different ways you can, um, there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can do 10 times this however many are left, three, six, nine, 12, 15. And you end up with your 150. Sorry, my phone went off. Um, and so that's, that's really all there is. So he kept $150. Nice. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. And uh, click subscribe if you think so too. And I will see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.